what's up guys, it's Aaron from Better Than Takeout. Today, we're gonna prepare a beer can chicken, but we're not gonna use a beer can. We are gonna use a throne, you see? And what I've done here is that I've just simply prepared a simple brine for the chicken to soak in for a couple hours before we go outside and start to prepare the grill. Um, simply some lemons, some oranges, and some onions chopped up. Um, you want to keep the rind on the fruit, on the, uh, your fruit there, so that way when you're squeezing, you're not squeezing through your fingers where, you know, that is acid, so um, skin can get into your brine there if you're, you know, not careful. So be careful how you squeeze your lemons and oranges and things like that to have an acidic type of uh, juice. So, uh, so basically what we've done here is we've added some uh, coarse kosher salt, like uh, you want to put a, a, a decent amount of salt. You know, there's numerous recipes out there, but uh, you want to put a nice amount of salt just to your taste, okay? That's mainly what the brine consists of. And then we also got a couple oranges and a couple of lemons and a whole onion chopped up. So we're going to let that uh, soak for about two hours, and then we're going to head out to the grill and prepare that. So when we get to the point of putting the beer inside the throne there, I will come back to you guys and, and we can watch and watch the process as we begin to rinse the chicken off, put beer into our throne here, and also season the chicken. So stay tuned and I will be back. See you. All right, we're back. Uh, we left off with uh, placing the chicken in the brine. Uh, we did, we left it in this brine for two hours. Um, a lot of you guys may ask, what is a brine? What is the purpose of brining? If you already don't know. Uh, brine is just simply a uh, water and salt solution that has two purposes. It seasons the meat and it also keeps the meat moist while it's cooking in your smoker or roasting in your pan and oven. So that's a lot of reason why you will want to brine it. Just simply to keep the chicken moist and to put in a little salt into that meat. So what we're going to do is go on and get our chicken out. Okay. First, I'm going to wash my hands here. Still got gloves placed up there, but I'm going to wash my hands first. Good. Right. Okay. We're going to go on and see the chicken's been in there two hours or so, and it's just soaking up that flavor, the acid from the lemons and onions and and the oranges and the salt is just getting into that meat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this chicken and we're gonna rinse that chicken off to get some of the extra salt content off of it. And you see we got seeds on it. So we're just gonna give it a, a quick rinse. All right, just give it a quick rinse. Put it on your plate. You can set your brine to the side. You no longer need that as uh, raw meat was in that. So you won't need that. So I'm just gonna get a couple of paper towels here and just pat dry the chicken. You don't want to get it dry. I mean, it's not gonna be completely dry. But you just want to get it pat dry for the next step. Right. All right, it's good enough. So. For this next step, I am going to just get my hands right here, and I'm going to place on some gloves here. Because we're about to give this chicken some tender love and care. We all need a little of that, you know? So, here we go. Hands a little wet, so. See, we have our chicken on our pan, so I'm gonna take this. This is olive oil, and we're just gonna use this as a binding agent for the season. I'm gonna use on the chicken, sort of, you know, stick to it, and also sort of give it a nice oil coat, and that also helps to lock in that that flavor and juice as well. So just give it a good rub there. Flip them over. Give them a good rub there. Legs there. Right. Now, 
whatever you like, your season of choice. You can use salt, pepper, garlic, whatever you like. But for me, today, we're going to use two gringos, chupacabra rub. Very good rub. You can find it, as it says on Facebook, online. It's a good rub. So what I'm going to do now is take off this glove. I'm going to open up my chupacabra. Grab me another glove. Then, then, grab me another fresh one. Okay, now, just, you know, give it some seasoning on there. Whatever you like. Like I said, whatever rub you got at the house, you don't have to make any special orders to get these products. It's just stuff that I do have at home, so. If I didn't have this, I would be using something else. So, whatever you have at home, even if it's just salt, pepper, and garlic, onion powder, whatever. The point is that you just want to put some flavor on that skin of the chicken. Because it's been sitting in brine, so that brine penetrates the skin and goes into the meat of the chicken. So, but still, it's a pretty good rub, so I'm just going to get that on there. Okay. So traditionally, when you're doing a beer can chicken, you know, out there people generally typically really use a beer can, but we're not. We're going to use this throne. We're going to use that Trader Throne, which the chicken sits better on that, and it holds a little bit more liquid, so therefore, you know, your chicken has more moisture building up under it. And the juices fall into that, and it just goes up into the cavity of the chicken to give your chicken a nice, good flavor inside out. So that's the one thing I didn't have out prep is a can of beer. So I'm going to step away for one minute, grab this can of beer, and I'll be back with you. All right, we're back. Just got me a can of beer, whatever beer you got. It could be Michelob. It could be... Miller Lite, just any old beer will work. So I'm going to pop this can open and I'm going to pour this beer into this throne here. You can season this, put a little honey in it or whatever, but this I'm, I, I'm not on this occasion. I'm just going to simply stick to the basics. Put the beer in the throne, put the chicken on the throne, and chicken onto the grill. So we got our beer in there. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put my gloves on. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to grab this chicken. Okay, I'm going to grab your chicken. And you just simply transfer him to your another pan you have sitting up. Place that chicken onto the throne where it's sitting up on its own. You see how that's way more convenient than having a thin little can that you're trying to balance this heavy chicken on? It always runs the risk of tipping over. So you can order one of these thrones from Trader.com, um, or you can also go online and get a generic one. Um, I'm sure there's all types of makers of these things, but this is specifically Trader as a gift that Trader gave to me for being on a promotional video of theirs over three years ago. So you can also look on YouTube and Google that and find that commercial if you like. But anyway, we're going to continue on with this uh, cook. We got our chicken on the throne. We got everything set up the way we want. We got our beer in there. So the next step is to get this thing onto the grill. So when, I, when we get out there and that thing gets cooking, I'll be right back with you then. See you later. All right, we're outside at the grill, guys. And as you can see, I got the grill on. This is a Traeger. Big text. So what this is for you guys that don't know what a Traeger is, a lot of people say, oh, it's just an electric grill. Not true. It is a real wood cooker. You have a thermostat that you can set. That's the only thing that's electric besides the auger, which feeds the pellets into a firebox on this thing. This is great. You can set it and forget it. Um, you ain't got to worry about Uncle Mike playing dominoes and ruining your chicken. You ain't got to worry about nothing like that, guys. 
really want to invest in a, a great product and a great grill, go to your local um, hardware store or wherever you can buy one of these things and you won't regret it. Okay, so right now I got hickory on this thing and I'm going to set this down to about 250. So when I set that down to 250, this is going to feed pellets to keep that temperature right in within that 250 range. It may go up and down, but it's going to keep it consistently at 250 on average. So that's a little bit of information on what I'm cooking on today. So I'm going to grab that chicken. As you can see, we got this thing hot and it's smoking. I got hickory on this thing today. So we're going to smoke this chicken with hickory. And just put them in there. I like to put it in the center. That way, it's kind of get a convection heat where the heat surrounds it. So we let this cook for two and a half hours. And we're going to come back out and check it with a temperature gauge to make sure we're at 160 degrees all the way around to make sure this chicken safe heat. So when it, we get to that point, guys, you can hear it sizzling. This thing is hot. This, when we get to the point where we're getting ready to check the temperature and get the chicken off just to make sure it's ready to eat, we will be back with you then. Close that lid. All right, guys, we're back. So it's been about two and a half hours or so. So we're going to take a look at this chicken and take it off. We're going to determine if it's done or not. And with a whole chicken and other big cuts of meat and other things, turkeys, you want to have one of these. This is a thermometer that goes inside the meat, and it also can be used to see what your cooking temperature is at the great level. But what we're going to do right now is use this to check the temperature of our meat. So we want to be with this whole chicken at 160 or above is fine, but you don't want to be below 160 when you're cooking poultry. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift this handle up and we're going to use this prod here, probe here, and we're going to stick it into there, not to the bone. And we're going to see how far this goes up. If it goes to 160, it's already at 165. So that's telling me right now that part of the that part of the chicken is done. So I'm gonna come to another side, and I'm just gonna poke right there. That's breast. Saying we're at 161 right there, so we're good. So we're gonna check out the legs here. You don't have to probe it this many times, but if you want to be safe like me, then probe it as many times as you feel. You're taking off, so we're pretty safe to take this chicken off. I probed it three times in three different locations and it's telling me it's over 160 degrees. So that's pretty good. We can take this chicken off. So what we're gonna do now is get you some hot hands, some gloves or something, okay? It's pretty sunny out here as you can tell. So that's why I didn't keep my pan right there. So when you go to grab it, it would have been super hot. So what I'm gonna do right now is just step out the frame real quick and grab my pan, all right? Good clean pan. And we're gonna put on our hot hands. But these can withstand temperatures up to 350 degrees Celsius. But I would not attempt to grab nothing that hot. You know, so. And we're gonna go on to take our chicken off, set it there. Okay, and we're gonna take our uh, our throne, set it on the side. Now right there, you have a perfectly smoked chicken from that Traeger. It smells delicious, and it's just a great, great way to cook a whole chicken on this throne. Um, as I said before, you can set up a beer can, that's the traditional way to do this thing, but it creates a balance issue. As I showed you, or as you would know, that, that little cylinder there, and you got this big chicken sitting on top, anything can happen, any little shift, and you come outside, your chicken's on the ground, on the, on the grate, and you're like, what in the world? So just invest in the throne. It doesn't have to be Traeger. Just invest in the throne if you're interested in cooking one of these chickens. So, well, we're just going to say this, you know, why go to one of these restaurants? Why do that? When it took us an hour to prepare a nice, hot, fresh chicken, right here to your taste you know who cooked it you know who has prepared it and you know who's going to serve it to your family so why do that when you do it at home and it'd be better than take out every single time if you like what you've seen please like the video and subscribe we do we do not 
and are not afraid of comments, but please keep them positive and we will try our best to reply to all comments. But um, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe, tell your friends, and um, just leave some messages and we'll try to get back with you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Aaron. I'll see you later.